Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Dominic from Perfect Swings, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to assemble your version 4 swing path trainer. When you're getting ready to put your swing path trainer together, there should be a couple things in the box. Um, first off, obviously you're going to have your guide board and then your base unit, but then there's also going to be a bag of assembly parts as well. And in that bag, you should have one T-knot, you'll have three locking nuts, two of these metal plates, and then four of these green blocks. So first thing you want to do before we start assembling is we have these four screws here. There are going to be some clear plastic sleeves on those, so you can just take those off and throw them away. But also we want to make sure that these screws are tightened down. So this metal plate right here is threaded, so make sure it's not loose, make sure there's no gap. So just tighten those down and make sure they're good to go. Also, one other thing to note is when we're putting this together, you want to make sure that this gap right here with the T-retainer is over the base where the legs open. Um, we've seen a couple people put it together backwards like this, where the guide bar is actually over these legs. So just make sure the front end of the board with the gap is over the legs that open. But let's just get right into actually assembling the T. So the first thing that we're going to do is you're going to take your green block right here you're going to spread these two washers and you're going to put that green block in between and then we're going to take our second green block and we're going to throw it on the front of the board from here you're just going to line up the two screws with the green block insert those in and then you'll have the two screws over the pipe there green block will go on, the metal plate will go on top of that, and then we'll throw on the lock nuts. We're not going to put on the T-knob just yet, and I'll explain that in a second, but when you do put it on, this T-knob goes on the front block. It doesn't matter which screw it is. For assembly pur purposes, it is easier to put it on the bottom and put the nut on the top. But when we are locking up the board, there is a little bit of a trick to it. So right now we have this gap in the two blocks. I'm just going to tighten this down until that gap is gone. So the gap is gone, but I'm not going to overdo it. I can tighten this more. I'm not going to do that. I'm just looking to make this gap disappear. And so what we're trying to do is we want to get the board tight enough to hold its position, but not actually lock in place. We want to be able to do that without having this, this T-knob on yet. So now we're moving on to the bottom nut. This is where a little bit of feel is required. So I want to find my desired tension. I'll mess around with it, it's still a little bit loose. Keep tightening it. And this is where you just play around with it a little bit. Maybe just a tad bit more. And so that's a good tension. It holds its spot, but it's still not too tight. So once I'm done with the back, I'm gonna move on to the front. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in the back. I'm just gonna tighten it until that gap is gone. It's still loose enough, which is good. And then I'm going to put on the T-knob. But I'm not tightening this down. It finds its tension point. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more of a turn and we're good to go from there. One of the questions we get a lot is what exactly is this black T-knob for? And the quick answer for that is for when any of these nuts or green blocks loosen over time and this board starts to move a little bit easier than you would like, instead of having to pull out a tool to tighten them back up, you can just adjust the T-knob to get that tension back to where you want it. Um, the one thing we don't want to do with this is get your angle set, tighten this down, and then that locks the board in place. That's definitely not what it's for. And the reason for that is you do want to have some give you want this to be able to move, 
So if it does get hit, one, it's going to protect the board and prevent any damage there, but more importantly, we don't want to damage the bat. So make sure you're never locking down the board. Um, the same thing applies to this teen out down here. Now the base assembly is designed so that when you pick it up, this whole unit right here holds its position. Um, what we don't want this thing to do is when you pick it up, it expands and then lifts off the ground. So same rule applies. We don't want to have to tighten down these bolts as we use them. So you have this T knob here and you're able to just tighten that down to make sure this holds its spot like it's supposed to. The other adjustment we have on here is our attack angle adjustment. So when you want to change this, just lift up the board slightly, don't press down on it. And that just makes it easier to lift the pin. You can adjust it back and forth and then just line up the holes and put the pin back in. But there are four settings here. We have zero, four, eight, and 12 degrees. Our recommendation is for eight degrees, but that is obviously going to be up to the user. And then the last piece we have on here before you start to use it is the guide bar holder. Just make sure that this is tightened up so that when it's holding its position, you don't let go and it falls down. Obviously we want it to be firm and hold its position, but we still want it to be able to move. So just make sure that's tightened up to your desired tension. So let's quickly go over how to actually set it up for when you're using the swing pad trainer. So the guide bar will come out and when you're first using this, it might be a little bit tough, but you're going to insert the guide bar and you're actually, it's going to be the short end. So you have a long end right here. The short end is going to go into the guide bar holder. And when you're first doing it, you will have to apply some force and give it a little wiggle, but it will go all the way through. Um, and then you can just move it up and down to whatever setting you want. But don't be afraid to apply some pressure there and give it a little wiggle so that it goes all the way through. And then we have our T-topper. Now, when we're using this, notice that there is a tall end and a short end. The tall end is always going to be facing away from the hitter. So right now, I'm set up as a lefty hitting this way. I wanna make sure that this T-topper is turned facing away from me like that. I want the tall end away. And the reason we want that is so that at severe angles, it can hold the ball. When I'm set up for a lefty like this hitting, what I don't want to do is have the tall end in front or facing me. So make sure that's always pointed away from the hitter. But if you want to switch from right-handed to left-handed or vice versa, you just turn the T-topper, slide that guide bar over, and you're ready to go. So that's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. We also have our phone number and email on our website. So feel free to reach out to us. We love talking to you guys. Um, we'll either answer your call, obviously, but if you email us, we'll get back to you within an hour. But until then, we'll see you in the next video.